Welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We hope you're enjoying this study and this new series called The Voice. And it's really asking the question, whose voice are you listening to? Now, we have a warm-up question for you to get started. Warm-up questions means everyone in your group answers the question. So this is your chance to get to know each other and to reveal a little bit about yourself. So let's see, uh, Ron, let's, let's see. What warm-up question do we have for today? <laughs> yeah, the question is, when you were a kid, whose voice most often made you feel loved? Mm. And then what about now? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. And before you come back, we want you to read 1 John chapter 2 and verses 3 through 17, and we'll come back and talk about them. Okay, well, I, I can't imagine that Everybody didn't answer their mom at some point, right? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Last week it was fear, and that was dad, and yeah. love mom, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's just kind of what it is. And, and you know, our, I would say there's times that uh, it's our wife that, that we most count on her voice oh, to yeah. make us feel loved. So, uh, for me, definitely. Yeah, yes. and, and we're also afraid of them, because <laughs> we want that love, right? That's right. Life. That's good. Okay, so we, we ask him to read a little bit in chapter 2. There's kind of a switching uh, gears in chapter 2, and we focused in on verses 3 through 17. So let's mm -hmm. get him started with some questions. Yeah, so uh, one of the things you find about John is that he, he wants you to know stuff, right? He says, we know, and, and we're doing this so that you'll know. And so it's, it's kind of almost like a test. It's like, you know those kind of self-assessment tests you see in a magazine or something, yeah. you know, are you in love? You know, check this box or whatever. It's almost like that sort of thing. So John is suggesting in verses 3 through 6 a way to know that you've come to know God. What is it? Well, Ron, that seems pretty easy. The verse 3 there, we've come to know him if we keep his commandments, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was easy. a really easy question, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you just are doing what he tells you to do, which yeah. is easier said than done, right? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, what you find a lot of times in, in churches, people, people do the second part where he says, whoever says I know him but does not keep his commands is a liar. And, and sometimes, you know, um, Maybe all of us have been guilty this one time or another. We want to put up a front, says, I know him, but then we don't do. And, and so that's the test. It's, it's about living authentically as best we can, right? And it's, it's not what saves you, but it's the evidence of a changed life. I think it's his light in us. He begins to show us. Now let's dig in a little bit deeper in question two. What does John mean when he says that God's love is made complete or perfect in verse 5, which mm -hmm. is an interesting question. Okay, the Greek word, isn't it teleos? Yeah, yeah, tough word, right? Yeah. Because we don't have a good concept for it in English, a good match. You know, we say perfect. Almost when, mature, isn't it? Yeah, it's more like mature, complete. In, in, complete or... Like, uh, I heard one guy explain it this way. When, when we say perfect, like let's think of it was a screwdriver. We would say, oh, that's a perfect screwdriver. We would imagine a screwdriver that was amazing, shiny, brand new, or whatever. But in the Greek concept, it could be, it could be a screwdriver that's old, oily, it's got a scratch on it. What, what makes it perfect is, is that it perfectly does the job. It does the job. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's really uh, what that specific phrase means. And that, that's good for them to think about. It helps to get the context of everything. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to question three. So uh, John gives us a warning, and, there, and the warning is found in verses seven through nine. What does he warn us about? Okay, here's a warning. An interesting warning, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hypocrisy, isn't it? Yeah, and, and John uses, over and over again, he's using uh, love versus hate. You know, hate your brother. And I thought about that. I thought, wow, you know, do I hate anybody? I mean, I guess, you know, I wonder, is there something in me? I'm sure there's some people who would be like, oh, yeah, I hate somebody. I can name them right now. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's, 
I think of these as kind of being, he's not talking in a narrow sense, uh, but in terms of actions, maybe the way you act towards others and right. that sort of thing. It's kind of the way we live out our lives, right? It's, mm-hmm. a, it's the evidence of our life is, is not hatred, but love, right? Right, right. It, it's uh, right on. So um, question four here that we want you to dig in a little deeper is what does John say about children, fathers, and young men? Kind of a uh, really good section here. Yeah. Dig in and answer that question. So this one is interesting because a lot of people look at this and go, what is he talking about? Is he talking to different age groups? You know, it kind of sounds like that. Uh, Other people say, no, he's really just talking about different aspects of your life as a believer. You know, like maybe as a children, the thing, uh, as a new believer, the focus is really sins being forgiven. Uh, and then as a mature believer, you move into father, you know, uh, you know so him. spiritual maturity. Yeah, like spiritual. Yeah, sure. and then in the, in the in-between, in that young man phase, it's all about battle, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so what do you think? Do you think that's what he's talking about? Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, probably oh, children. Could it, go, it could go either way, though, really. It, it, it could, it, yeah. It, it's, a, it's all right. It's all right to, to look at it either way. So let's dig a little bit deeper here. And, and question five, why does John say that we should not love the world? Mm. Verses 15 and 16. Didn't John say God so loved the world? Again, in John 3, 16, isn't this a contradiction? So yeah. this is an interesting question. Love to hear how they discuss this. <laughs> so the... the uh, it is one of these verses that sometimes when you're talking to somebody, who, you know, they'll go, well, the Bible's full of contradictions. I mean, look at this. John says, don't love the world. Jesus mm-hmm. says, God so loved the world. Which is it? <laughs> I love those conversations. Yeah. You don't they have to get, good. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to draw people out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when Jesus talking, is talking about God so loved the world, he's talking about people. people. Yes, everybody, all of us. Right. Yeah. When John says, don't love the world, he's talking about a system, a, yeah. a lifestyle, a, way of, right. a worldly way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's all about get, accumulate, mm-hmm. my stuff and my riches and all that. And you can really see as he goes on later to the things he talks about, that that's what he means. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite of the values of God, really, the world's values. It's, it's a value system that you're not supposed to like. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's give this last question for them to really dig in on. Yeah, so this question's a little technical, but it's really important. It really unlocks John for you. One of his favorite words, uh, he uses it a lot in this letter in the Greek, is meno. Uh, It's translated here as walk, but it's uh, also translated in John 15, 4 as remain or sometimes abide. And it's this story of, uh, that Jesus told about the vine and the branches, and you have to remain in the vine, uh, the branch has to remain in the vine to be fruitful. So um, this is a tough one, but if you think through this, does this change the way you think about what John has said in these verses? Okay, Ron, I think there's some blank stares out there, to be honest with you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is one that you want to help <laughs> and, and that we want to help them yeah. understand how they can think differently about this, right? Yeah, and this is one, you know, a lot of times in these studies we throw out, well, the Greek word is this, and, all, and, and you know, it is important to understand that these things were written in a different language to a, in a different cultural context. Right. When we say walk, we're talking about, we think effort, motion, yeah. I'm moving, I'm walking, I'm doing it. Remain or abide is a different picture, isn't it? It's like resting in, right. uh, connected connecting to, to right. Right. getting our resources from something else. Yes. Yeah, and if you read John and you think, I'm going to try harder, I'm going to just buckle down and I can do this, you're going to be really disappointed. John's really about being vitally connected to the vine, to Jesus. Which ultimately means we draw our energy from him to live out our lives. And that's a great... A great thought for you uh, to clo- conclude this study from. Uh, as you live out your life, draw your energy from Christ, and you'll find some incredible things will happen in your life as you let his light shine in you. 
Now, now, Ron, this is the end of the second week of study. Some people are actually going to be stopping their study, mm -hmm. uh, I think, either next week or this week for the rest of the summer. Mm. We're still going to do another two studies so they could continue for another two sure. studies. Sure, and we absolutely. encourage them to do that. But no matter what, we hope that you'll meet all summer long. So um, in, a, in a, maybe a social event or, or to go camping together, do something together to stay connected. So take a little bit of time, pray together, and maybe a good chance for you to do a little planning before you get ready for the summer. And we'll see you next week at Connection Point Studies.